going to do. Uh, we're going to talk about one-sided limit. For, start, for instance, let's talk about the right-hand uh, limit. So this is something you haven't seen uh, last week on Thursday, on Friday. Right, right-hand limit or one-sided limit. The, uh, the definition will be slightly modified. We're going to start with the same thing, the limit of as x approaches a, let's say from the right side, so it will be x approaches a plus of f of x equals L if for every epsilon greater than zero, there is delta greater than zero such that so the wording is pretty much at this point the same here is the little difference if x is greater than a but less than a plus delta remember delta is operating only on the right side of A, so we write it like so, then the absolute value of the difference between f of x and the limit value L is less than that epsilon. Okay? So the statement that indicate that we are working on the right side of A is given right in this uh, compound inequality. Likewise, we can look at the left-hand uh, limit. We approach from the left. So you can see that minor adjustment. We're going to say that the limit as x approaches a minus, in other words, we approach a from the left side, the limit of f of x equals L if for every, oops, for every epsilon positive, there is a positive delta such that, and before I continue, let me I have an extra E right here, so let me erase that. So this statement is going to be modified. This time, remember, we're approaching A from the left side, so we'll have on the left of the compound equality, we have A minus delta is less than A, and A itself is less than delta. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, A, X, and A. Like so. So if this happened, then we have the same uh, statement as on top. Then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, so those are the uh, the one, the two variations of the one-sided limit.